Hey guys, it's a beautiful day in British Columbia and I've got a really special bike for you today. This is the Surface 604 Shred 2020. It's been updated. This bike was awesome. Last year was like the first year I saw it and I was really impressed with the price point and just some of the cool design choices they made. Uh, so I wanted to do something kind of fun and compare it to the specialized Stump Jumper FSR. This is a full suspension cross country, sort of like I mean, this bike is really widely recognized and appreciated in the mountain biking space. And this is a non-electric bike, uh, no kickstand. You can see it's like laying on the ground compared to our shred over here. We do have a nice kickstand, excellent placement on that. This is not a full suspension bike. This is a hardtail with 100 millimeters of travel up front compared to 120 millimeters of travel front and rear. Now, before I get into the deep comparisons, um, it, again, they're they're really two different bikes, but this was, I think it's like five, six year old bike now. And at the time it was one of the first to hit the scene with like the plus size tires. So these are 27.5 by three inches. It's got boost hub spacing, 110 millimeters up front, 148 in the rear. And that wider hub spacing gives you a sturdier spoke bracing angle and it provides some more space for those big tires that kind of thing. I mean, it's it's really interesting to see how that's been carrying over into the e-bike space. These are also plus size tires, 27.5 by 2.8. Um, and actually they, they seem a little bit closer to 2.6. I was looking at these back to back. Uh, the more air volume is gonna give you some comfort and the wider surface area is gonna give you traction and stability. And so a lot of uh, mountain bikes in general have gone towards this because it, it almost just acts like a stabilizer and it makes things a little bit more fun. You can just kind of go over stuff. Uh, the effective diameter of the wheel gets closer to like a 29er and that was a really popular trend for a while because it provides a lower attack angle. So instead of like running into things, it sort of smooths over them and it almost like spans gaps and stuff like that. So for me, this is a really cool bike. And now that we're seeing a lot of those trends and stuff sort of settle down and uh, 27.5 being very popular plus size tires and stuff we see it coming into the e-bike space uh, where it fits really nicely because the extra weight of those bigger tires it, it's compensated for because you have electric assist a motor and in this case this bike is really cool because not only are you getting like electric assist but you're getting kind of all three classes at your fingertips you can unlock this and go like 28 miles per hour if you want. You can also set it to go 20 miles per hour and it comes with a throttle, so that's kind of class two. Or you can just take the throttle right off and make this class one and use it on like electric mountain biking trails and stuff. So actually see the trigger throttle is right here and there's a quick disconnect right here. They've upgraded the wiring so you can see four wires coming into one single wire. It's a lot cleaner, internally routed, um, just a, a lot of little finer, Attention to detail is, is something I care about a lot. Along with a really good price point, this is 2100 bucks. Now, if we compare that to the Specialized Stump Jumper FSR, like the most affordable version, the Comp, is like $4,500. It goes all the way up to 10,000 bucks if you want, uh, like an S-Works one and carbon fiber, things like that. So I think when, you know, this one itself was like $5,500. Uh, and, and it's a great bike, don't get me wrong. I mean, it weighs 31 pounds compared to 57 pounds. And as we see here, this bike does not come with a suspension seat post. That's $99 extra, add some weight. Does not come with this rear rack, $50, add some weight. So as seen here, this bike is probably closer to like 62 pounds. And I did weigh it separately and everything. So I'm doing my best to give you guys the deep insights. Uh, the interesting thing is you actually can add a rear rack, right? You, you can't really do that on full suspension bikes. I mean, you, technically you could put something on the seat post that hangs out. Maybe you could mount something on the rear um, seat stays right here, but it's gonna go up and down. You're gonna have that unsprung weight. And that's another reason why uh, as far as full suspension electric mountain bikes go, it's nice to have a mid drive because then the wheels can play uh, more freely. And on this bike, we've got a hub motor, which helps to save money and it works a little bit better with throttle on demand. So it's a really good setup, maybe not quite as comfortable and dynamic as full suspension, but for what it is, I mean, this bike really performs well. Now you heard me talking about boost hub spacing over here and like through axles and everything. You don't get that on the Surface 604 Shred. They're using standard 100 millimeter hub spacing up front with a, a traditional nine millimeter quick release skewer. You know, it gets the job done. And thankfully 
even with these wider tires, it fits pretty well up here. And they sell optional fenders. So you can actually put a fender on kind of the arch right here mounts. And then there's these little clips and stuff. So it turns this thing into like a, almost like an SUV go anywhere type of commuter platform, or it could be this light trail bike. Okay, and then same thing back here, having these bosses and being able to, you know, just know that you're gonna get some fenders that actually work. I love that Surface 604 has these accessories and they just sort of check them and outfitted the bike to be able to handle it. Cause for me, this, as someone with limited space, I like that this bike is kind of like do everything. Okay, it is pre-wired for adding a light in the rear. Right now we've just got the reflector that comes standard with the rack but it has an awesome integrated light up front, a Shendo 60. It's got these like two LEDs and then a really nice uh, beam that doesn't go up so much. It kind of goes down and it actually lights your path pretty well. So again, back to this 100 millimeter hub spacing, 135 in the rear. It's not boost. It's not even 142, uh, but I think that probably helps them keep the price down and they're able to use more traditional parts. This is running a SRAM X5 derailleur. It's a nine speed and the sprockets are 11 to 34 tooth. So that's a pretty good spread and 38 tooth up here on the chain ring, that's steel. It doesn't have narrow wide tooth pattern or anything, but you know, it, it kind of gets the job done. And I'm told that they will have like a slap guard. This bike doesn't have it uh, built on. And while we're up here looking at this, I want to call out this hollow spindle. Those tend to be stiffer and easier to service than like Isis splined and they're much higher quality uh, and more responsive than square tapered, of course. Okay, so if we come back over here, and we compare that. This has an 11 speed uh, SRAM GX derailleur here. It's got the roller clutch and everything. And this is like 11 to 42. So see, it's much larger uh, low gear for climbing. But up here we have a smaller chain ring, 28 tooth versus 38 tooth. So it's a different setup, but I wanna point out it has narrow wide tooth and stuff like that. You know, this is, you're paying more. That's the kind of stuff that you get. But for a bike like this that isn't quite so hardcore, I think it's it's kind of fine. And I want to I want to touch on what makes this bike a little less aggressive than that. It's not just the suspension. It's that if you look at this steering tube, it's a little bit longer and it's a bit higher. And then we have this like 45 degree, 90 millimeter stem that brings that handlebar up. So when you're riding it, you're much more upright and comfortable. You're not leaning forward, pointed down the hill uh, the way that you are on this one. You can see I've got the seat raised really high. This has a dropper seat post. You've got a, a very straight stem there, short, uh, a, a shorter uh, like steering tube and the geometry of it, even though it does still have this like sloped and low standover height, it's just a little bit more aggressive. You're gonna be leaning forward more than you are on this bike. So for me, that's, that's a good thing. For a bike that's sort of potentially just to get around town, but also do some trail riding, this is perfect. It's a little bit more comfortable and you could even swap these handlebars for something that's a little bit more like low rise, mid rise to bring it back even more. And I love that it comes in two sizes. So this is the larger like 19 inch, but they also have 17.5 inch for someone who's a little bit shorter. I did not have a problem, you know, raising the seat height and then getting full leg extension when I was pedaling. You'll notice it's got these awesome Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals with the fixed pins. Th these are kind of cheap, but they're much better than cage. And I like that they're aluminum versus plastic. On this bike, we've got uh, Welgo magnesium with adjustable height pins. So again, an upgrade, but kind of, you know, functionally very similar. So it was kind of a delighter to see that. And this also has the, the hollow um, spindle at the bottom bracket there. Pretty, pretty interesting to see that kind of stuff. And then the suspension, of course. So this is an air fork, same thing back here, a little bit lighter. We've got these wide, sturdy 34 millimeter stanchions versus 30 millimeter. This one, these are just steel. Uh, they aren't anodized or anything and steel is, is tough. Maybe they're kind of like a chrome coating on them. 30 millimeters, they don't have to be as, as thick because the travel's only 100 millimeters, if that. You know, they kind of say 100 millimeters, probably closer to, to 80. I like that it has lockout and preload adjust. So there is some adjustability on this. It's not just like a really basic stem. They're trying to get some value here. Of course, it's heavier than air, but you're getting some adjustability. Over here, we have that kind of compression adjust with three steps instead of just on and off. And then we have rebound adjust. Preload is, is sort of factored in um, to how, how you set this up with air pressure. Pressure. So it's again, sort of higher end, a little bit more adjustability. One thing that struck me when I was looking at the bikes and just trying to take it all in, appreciating it, I'm, I'm doing a little bit deeper on this bike because I really like it. I feel like it's a great value and it's gonna be a popular model. 
notice that I have uh, 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brake up front and then 160 in the rear. I like that given the extra weight of the shred. They went with 180 millimeter front and rear. These are dual piston, Tektro, really nice brake levers, Tektro Dorado, big, big lever surface area so you can you can grab with multiple hands and just provide a lot of power. Both have motor inhibitors, so you override motor support. And this is a fairly powerful motor. It's it's from a Bafang, 500 watt nominal, up to 750 watt peak, 50 newton meters of torque, and it operates independently of your drivetrain. So you're not putting the pressure on the chain or the teeth on the cassette back here the same way that you would with a mid drive. And again, it just works very well with the throttle. Say you drop your chain or you break it or something, you could still limp home uh, just using the throttle. It does have walk mode. It's the kind of thing where you could hop off this bike if, if there's a really steep section that feels intimidating and you don't feel comfortable riding, you just hop off the bike and you can use that throttle to sort of let the bike almost carry you up and stabilize you as you climb. Something like this at 31 pounds, I mean, you could just lift this bike, put it on your shoulder and walk up, but this is much more like active, aggressive type of riding compared to an e-bike that's just sort of get around. So I, I love that it's so flexible, that you have so many options. I really like that they, they put the money in the right places, right? Like the the tires and the nicer i don't know just slight slightly wider and the geometry of the bike the lower standover height for 2020 they lowered this even more they still got the gussets that provide strength they've got the battery weight low and center two battery options just like the two frame sizes it's pretty cool 48 volts we're looking at the upgraded 14 amp hour uh, but they also have a 10.4 amp hour so you can go from you know, 500 watt hours is, is sort of the base. And that's why I feel it's, it's a little bit misleading to show you all the goodies on this bike. That's just the bike they had. And they were like, yeah, you can review this one. And frankly, I'm a fan of suspension seat posts because I have some back and neck sensitivity. It's nice to have suspension fork, but this gives you that full suspension feel for just 99 bucks extra. 30.4 millimeters on the standard seat post and it's 300 millimeters um, long. The suspension posts are 27.2, so they give you a shim so you can adapt it, and that's something worth calling out. I like that it's slightly wider uh, seat post, uh, like stock, because this tube is a little bit wider, everything's a little bit tougher, it adds some strength to the frame, and I like the hydroform tubing here, how it gives you some angles, the color, the just the design of this has been upgraded, got some chevrons down there, the black, really nice, sort of a satin black tying into that black on the suspension fork. You can see over here, this is like sort of a, a richer, maybe slightly glossier black, but same thing, color matched and stuff, and like the, the red. Really interesting to me how, how similar uh, some of the choices are between these these two bikes. So yeah, I feel like that's a, a pretty good overview, but there are a few other little things to call out. They went with black rims, black spokes, 13 gauge up front, 12 gauge in the rear, so a little bit thicker to provide some some strength and durability given that you have that hub motor that's you know pushing you along and adding just some weight to the rear section of the bike again nice to have a lot of that weight forward about 7.1 pounds for the battery nine pounds for the motor and the seven pounds that's for the 10.4 amp hour but the 14 it's not much heavier i think you know riding this along has felt pretty comfortable being able to to dial things in raise and lower that stem things like that having a little flick bell is nice locking flat grips one thing i'm I kind of mixed on is the SRAM drivetrain. You get really good value from SRAM, uh, but you, you don't get the shifters I like where you can go forward or back. These ones only go forward on the high gear, and then you have the multi-step on the low. It's crisp, it feels pretty good. Uh, it just doesn't have that one little feature I like from Shimano. And the cockpit's fairly clean up here. Right, we've got the control pad and then the the trigger throttle, and a really, really nice display. I've kind of been saving this. This is very impressive to me. The edges are beveled, it's it's small, it's tight. This is beautiful. It says Surface 604 and there's a little ambient light sensor right there. So to turn on the bike, you know, first you would make sure the battery's all charged. You can charge it on or off the bike and it has a little USB type A charging port built right in. So you could use that as like spare power if you're camping or something. A lot of times I'll take that off to make the bikes easier to move. A lot of times I'm moving this around with my car rack and I just have like an inch and a quarter hitch. So I wanna reduce the weight as much as possible before putting the bike on my car. So I like that you can take the battery off. Uh, this is the charger, weighs about a pound and a half. It's very 
traditional, kind of a, a basic charger, two amp output. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's gonna be cheaper to replace. And it's, it's almost like universal. Kind of cool that they got their name on there, Surface 604. It comes with a great little booklet talking about all the display settings and stuff. So anyway, you got the battery all charged up. You can see how full it is by tapping that little power button. But when you're ready to actually turn on the bike, you've got to use this button pad here. So you hold the power button for just a second. And we've actually got it set up with a password right now. I'm gonna angle this down, try to show you guys. There we go, I'm blocking the glare. The default password is one, two, one, two. And we set this up with the password just for fun to show that you can lock the bike, which is nice on a bike with like a throttle. Because if you leave this at work and you, you don't want to bring the battery up with you, people could tamper with it. So it's nice to have a password. Love that they went with battery percentage infographic here. It's not just like the five bars that you see, you know, down here or on a lot of other kind of cheaper displays. And then we've got this really cool, almost like in a car or something. You can see how fast you're going. It's in kilometers per hour right now. We're in Canada, which is where Surface 604 is based. And the little power meter, so the power of the motor, it'll surge when you're actually riding. Down here we have trip distance and odometer by default, but if we press the I button over here, it, it'll go to max speed, average speed, time, that's like trip time, and then back to odometer. So, you know, you kind of got everything you want. Starts in assist level one, and that throttle is hot. The throttle is actually active in all levels of assist and zero. So if we go to zero, uh, you can see that getting full power. Let's see if we can get the little power meter at the, that, there it is, it kind of surged for just a second. I think that's cool. This is a variable speed trigger throttle, so why not have access to the full range of power? Um, I'm a fan of that. You click up and down pretty quickly and easily, all the way up to five, and then it's like, that's it, I'm all, I'm all the way at the top. It doesn't cycle around, which in some ways is kind of nice. You might be focused on the trail and just like needing more power and click, 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 all the way up. You're not gonna worry about it accidentally flipping down. And the buttons are just, very clicky, very satisfying. Um, let's see, what else we got here? I wanna get that light going. So there we go, I, I pressed it once. There it is, that's what I'm talking about, very nice. See how there's like a hard cut right here? It goes from like no light to bright. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's like, it's very, it's aimable and it's focused and I like it. It is mounted to the arch of the suspension so it could bounce up and down a little bit. Would It'd be nice if this was mounted more to the steering a column or maybe the up here something like that but it's not the end of the world it gets the job done and it's a nicer light and it doesn't have cuts on the side um that'd be kind of nice if you could view it from the side it, you get into this territory of like it'd be nice if there was puncture protection on these tires it'd be really nice if there was like reflective sidewall stripes but that's almost like a city setup so given that these are already plus size you can run them at a little bit lower tire pressure if you want you get the stability and there's cst it's it is a name brand tire it's good enough. They've, they've done a pretty good job. They're still trying to hit that value price point. So let's see, go back over here. There we go. So I turned the, the light off and then the screen got bright again. So it's kind of cool. They even dim the display so at night it's not gonna kind of like take out your night vision. I really appreciate that. So many e-bikes these days is like bright LEDs and it gets kind of, it gets kind of overwhelming. Um, so, okay, if we wanna go into, well, let's, let's do walk mode first. If I hold minus, there we go, there's walk mode. Good for if you get a flat tire or just pushing through a park. And then settings, we hold plus and minus. Got display settings and advanced settings. So we can toggle from metric to, uh, what is that called? It's Imperial, there it is. So let's do that. Um, you can actually adjust the brightness. I love that, dormancy, so that's like how quickly it turns off. State of charge view, you can go from percent to, um, what's this? Voltage, oh, that's kind of cool. Trip reset, uh, sensitivity, password, we can add or remove that. Voltage and then back. Let's see what these advanced settings are. Okay, wheel size 700C. So they're just kind of estimating since these are 27.5 uh, by, by 2.8. So it gives you a little bit more of a, a larger effective diameter. Uh, speed limit 20 miles per hour. And again, I, I like that you can you can adjust this yourself. You can sort of raise or lower it. I'm gonna mess with this for a second. Yeah, you can take it all the way down. So if you're someone who, maybe this is for, for like a younger person and you're like, I wanna put a speed limit on it. It's kind of cool. Take it all the way up. Let's go all the way up, guys. Cool, 37 miles per hour. Battery info. Man, there's just a lot here. And this is a fairly easy to navigate. Uh, display. So I really like it. I really like the display choice. That's a, another one of the upgrades for this year. 
Um, just, just nice, nice stuff overall. I think I'm gonna uh, hop on this thing and go for a ride, but I, I do wanna call out how nice this platform is on top of the rack, standard gauge tubing, and a little bungee loop here so you could use bungees or you could have panniers hanging off the side. Um, just, it's sometimes it's tough to find a rack that's gonna fit just right. And this one doesn't even require like that height adjustment that gets kind of loose over time. There's just these four bolt points. Uh, I guess six, cause you have those ones right there, but it's it's a nice, a nice rack. Apparently they are gonna have like a derail your guard on this. This one didn't have it. Um, and then that, that slap guard that I was talking about before. I feel like I've gone through this thing with a fine tooth comb cause I was so excited about it last year, getting to see it and and just the little refinements they've done and how they've listened and it is really nice. Is there anything else we can glean from this one? Oh yeah, bottle cage. This one does have bottle cage bosses. This is where the battery is on the other bike. I guess they couldn't fit them. Uh, there are some aftermarket like kind of strap type of things that would go right here. And I was told that in the future they might add some bottle cage bosses here uh, under that down tube as well. And last year they had like a fatter, bigger steering tube right here and it didn't look as good. It probably just added unnecessary weight in my opinion. And you can see they've even stripped, they don't have like wrap or anything. This is all pretty exposed, um, but easier to tinker with. And oh yeah, I almost forgot, check it out. There's another USB charging port right where you want it right up here at the display. So if you do want to put another light on your handlebar or maybe a phone to use for an app, a GPS, Strava, that kind of thing, you can, and you can, can maintain that using a standard USB port right there and tap into that high capacity battery. I love that. Again, two frame sizes and you know two battery options and all these accessories guaranteed to work. For me, I, like, I really feel like Surface 604 has, has done a great job. Um, and for those of you who are interested, the name is talking about all the different surfaces in the 604 area code, like phone numbers, which is the Vancouver greater metro area, which is where I am right now. And that's where they're based. So very cool. <sighs> Closing thoughts. I really like this bike uh, and it is fun as like a fitness machine. Uh, but yeah, just the aggressiveness, even the saddle, this one's, it's very, it's very hard. One thing I think, I don't know if they had this last year. This is Nebula, Celly Royale. It's a gel saddle. It's very comfortable. So even if you don't get that suspension seat post upgrade, it still feels really good, especially with those uh, plus size tires. I think my one thing I was concerned about at first is like the position of the kickstand. I was like, is that too close to the pedal? But I haven't had any heel strikes. They mounted it to the inside of that tab. So when you stow this, see how it doesn't come into contact with that disc brake rotor, it stays out of the way. I'm not getting those heel strikes. Oh, and I think, yeah, just some wires and stuff coming out of the bottom. They're fairly well protected when you look at that chain ring. Um, there's the charging port. So that's something I call out too. If you're charging this bike, let's say it's, it's like this, you got the battery plugged in because you don't want to take the battery um, off. If you bump these pedals, it could pass and kind of collide where you're you're plugged in. So just be careful. That is a vulnerable uh, spot. I like that the, the key is up here. It'd be nice if it was on the, the drivetrain side of the bike because this side's a little more vulnerable if the bike tips. Not the end of the world. Again, given that it has a kickstand and it's a, it's a nicer stand. I feel like they've done a pretty good job. Okay, time to ride. Let's do it. One thing Vancouver has a lot of is hills and this is this is pretty steep like what we're looking at here so it's kind of flat right here and then it just goes this goes right up and this is a nice this is a perfect path for this bike you know it's it's kind of gravel it's got some loose slightly bigger rocks there are some roots and stuff it's great these tires are going to perform well excellent traction you got the comfort of the suspension and stuff but those hub motors it is a bit of a trade-off you know mid drives can give you a bit more torque for climbing uh, as long as you shift gears appropriately. And I, I am going to start out in a lower gear. So if I need to help out by pedaling, that it's gonna be set for that. I've, I've got everything staged properly. Um, just kind of keep that in mind. Hub motor's great. And this one's actually been really quiet. One thing I like about the drive system here is that they're actually using a torque sensor. It's built into this little plate. Uh, and that's designed to feel a lot more natural and smooth a lot of other affordably priced i mean this isn't it's not 1500 bucks but for around 2000 us to have a torque sensor and have some of these nicer components and stuff it's pretty good last year they had a torque sensor right here at the bottom bracket it feels similar to me um it's working fine, but compared to like a cadence sensor, those just really feel like on or off. Are you pedaling? Yes. 
here's the power that you're asking for, you know, full power, half power, whatever setting you're at. Whereas this one, it's a little bit more dynamic and it's not making me work super hard, which I appreciate because I do have a sensitive knee. And then being able to override with that trigger throttle at full blast at any time, doesn't matter if you're in a low level assist, you can just like blast and get full power. For me, this is the perfect setup. So I'm gonna stow that kickstand. I'm gonna try to climb this without pedaling. Uh, I just wanna use the throttle and see how strong that motor is. Keep in mind, I'm 135 pounds. I'm not like this super big guy. I'm around 5'9", uh, 31 inch inseam for reference. So here we go, let's do it. Oh boy, it's a matter of trying to balance right now. It is making it, amazingly. I, wow. Pretty much went into this with no speed and look at the power's just like maxed out. And now that it's flattening out, we're gonna get some speed going. So we were at like five miles per hour and now it's really picking up quickly. Oh boy. Almost so fast that I, I don't wanna like slide out that front wheel. Wow, we made it. We made it to one of my favorite little parks. <laughs> Having some fun here. There's some more, some more off-road. This is all done without pedaling, not, not one pedal stroke. All the way up to the top of this. And I have ridden this on non-electric bikes and uh, you know, it takes some effort. Now we're gonna do the torque sensor. Feeling very smooth and natural, fairly stable, even at a relatively low speed here, nine, 10 miles per hour. There's no chain guard, so I did notice like my pants are touching that a little bit when I'm, when I'm pedaling. I haven't had trouble with that uh, dropping off though. And here's the throttle again. It's a really quiet motor, really smooth too. Okay guys, we're starting out on concrete so you can see how loud that motor is. I have it in the highest level of assist, which is level five, 38 tooth chain ring up front, 11 to 34 in the rear, which is nice. Cause a lot of times I'll see, you know, 14 to 28 or even 11 to 32. So 11 to 34 gives you that extra, a little bit of extra width for your climbing gear in the back, which is just nice uh, given that this is kind of a mountain bike. So here we go. You might've heard the kickstand like brrr when I went off that little jump a minute ago. And that's why, you know, kind of like real mountain bikes don't really have kickstands and you can remove it easily, but this is a bit of a hybrid. It's kind of SUV setup. So now I'm gonna do some off-road riding. get some suspension fork action. a little air this bike is tight it's quiet um, I'm loving the suspension seat post uh, you know yeah this is fun it's really fun that's it I've had a blast on this thing I love how versatile it is and I feel like the price point is right again having two frame sizes is a big win some battery upgrades and accessories so that you can set this up as sort of a fun commuter type of bike if you want to and then have fun on the weekends 
For the full written review on the Surface 604 Shred, I will see you back at electricbikereview.com. I've recorded all the specs and everything that I could, like as detailed as possible. Um, I welcome your feedback. Maybe you've tried this, you've got last year's bike, how did it hold up? Uh, any other questions you have, I'll be answering comments. And I love you guys, ride safe. We'll see you next time.